Welcome to this, our first program on the Stoichiometric Relationships Unit. I want to begin by reviewing the particle nature of matter and the changes of state. But first, let's create a little bit of room. Matter is anything that takes up space. We then divide that concept into two ideas. Matter, which is a pure substance, which we define as having a definite and constant composition and a mixture, which is made from a combination of pure substances. Now, if we look at this from the particle nature of matter, that would mean that the particles in my pure substance are all exactly the same. So perhaps they might resemble individual atoms, or they might resemble, say, groups of atoms. But the idea is that from a particle perspective, in a pure substance, all the particles appear the same. Examples of things that perhaps would show this, aluminum foil. All the particles in aluminum foil would essentially resemble the aluminum atom. A container of water. All of the particles in there would resemble water molecules, or H2O. A mixture, as I referred to earlier, is a combination of substances. So if we were to look perhaps at them, we might see some particles that look like this. We might see some particles in a mixture that look like this. We might even have some particles that are like this. But essentially we have a mixture of particles and the properties of the mixture retain the properties of their individual components. So they would have properties, perhaps melting points resembling those and those and those particles. Here are some examples of things that would fit that description. Honey, a mixture of sugars and water. And this conglomeration of peanuts and Smarties and raisins. Again, a bunch of individual properties from individual substances. Now, we then further take our, sub our categories and further subdivide them. In a pure substance, so that we call things elements where we have all atoms that are present in that material have the same number of protons. So in my sample of aluminum foil, we would find that every single atom in there would have essentially 13 protons in it. Water, on the other hand, is a mixture of atoms in a fixed ratio, H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Our homogeneous mixture, which is made again from a mixture of pure substances, we can best differentiate from the other mixture by what we call its uniform composition, meaning it appears the same throughout. If one was to look at this on a microscopic scale, we would see the particles uniformly spread out, sort of an equal abundance of each particle in an individual area. In the case of our mixture of peanuts and raisins, we have an example of a non-uniform mixture where the particles wouldn't be evenly spread out, nor their properties. Let's look at, now, a quick review of the concepts involved in changes of state. I'm going to go through a little bit of this diagram up here to go through some of the changes of state, as well as follow sort of what's happening down below here on a graph of time versus temperature. Let's move these back a little bit into place. Okay. Let's start off with a solid. Here we have an example of ice where the particles of water are arranged in a nice ordinary lattice. And let's say we begin at some temperature down here on our graph down below. Let's say we start right here at a temperature of say minus five degrees Celsius. We then proceed to add some heat to our ice. This is going to cause the particles that are present in here to start to vibrate back and forth more quickly. This results in an increase in temperature, which we see as sort of a line like this. So during this portion, we're getting a faster vibration of our water molecules. Eventually, we get to a point where we start to break the bonds that exist between our water molecules. And when that starts to turn, we reach the condition which we call melting. During that time, at zero degrees Celsius, the bonds start to break, but we don't get an increase in temperature during this stage. 
all that's happening is we're breaking bonds. We're not making the particles move any faster. So we're getting in here, we're disrupting the forces that hold the particles together in this nice ordered pattern. Once we have disrupted all the forces and we've melted it and turned it into a liquid, we've now arrived at this state, the temperature will again begin to rise. And during this portion, our molecules begin to rotate and spin. This results in greater kinetic energy, and again we get an increase in temperature up to the 100 degree mark. And all during this time, we can essentially view our particles as rotating and vibrating much, much faster. Once we reach 100 degrees, additional energy is used to further break the bonds that exist between our particles. This then results in the formation of my vapor, and we call this stage vaporization. Heat that's further added after we've broken all of the bonds in our liquid and we have nothing but water vapor or steam will lead to what we call further translational motion. So our particles will move from spot to spot. We call that translation. And as a result, with increasing temperature, particles tend to translate faster. So the important thing to note here is while we're making the change of state from melting or vaporization, we don't have a change in temperature. All this time while we're moving in this direction, we have what we call the addition of heat or an endothermic process. It is possible under certain conditions to go directly from a solid to a gas and we call that change of state sublimation. Going in the other direction we need to remove heat. We call those processes where heat is removed exothermic processes where heat is given off in the process. And just to finish up naming some of these processes, to go directly from a gas directly over to my solid, we call it deposition. To go from our gas to our liquid, condensation. And finally, to go from our liquid to our solid, freezing. So let that serve as a little review of some of the concepts of changes of state and the particle nature of matter. In our next program, we'll take a look specifically at chemical change and balancing chemical equations.